Hi everyone, this is Jopke and I'm going to show you how I created this uh, front cover of my new art journal, the Junk and Disorderly art journal that I got from Indigo Blue. And um, the process of this uh, front cover took a couple of days, so I created this uh, a little while ago. And um, the first thing I did was adding a layer of gesso and I used the G So Good uh, white gesso, uh, also from Indigo Blue. Um, and then I collected some bits and pieces of ephemera, uh, some old newspaper and some old cards and also some photos. And I had this uh, tissue paper with a, a blue floral uh, pattern on it. Uh, I decided to start with that because that would um, go nice uh, on the background, even though in the end um, you won't see much of it uh, showing through because there are going to be a lot of layers on top of this. Um, as I said just now, I have worked on this cover for a couple of days and uh, a lot of layers were uh, added so in the end uh, not much of those blue floral bits are shown but um, anyway here I am adding the old newspaper I tore some strips and everything I'm gluing down here is uh, glued down with the art medium by shirning, uh, which I need to use up. I still have quite a lot. I bought a one liter bottle and I still have half of it. Uh, next thing I am gluing down is this old letter. It was kind of crispy white still, but the tape, it was, there was tape on it. And that was kind of old and kind of uh, uh, discolored in, yellowish and uh, the tape was still on it so I could tear it off, peel it off and I you actually am using it in a later stage of uh, creating this this cover. Uh, meanwhile I'm just tearing down some bits and pieces of that letter and gluing it down and um, I used this uh, letter because I thought the white with the, the yellow of the old newspaper it was a very nice contrast. So always looking for that. And uh, the same with this, what is it? A, a pocket, a little bag of something. It had some black bold uh, letters on it and some lines. And I thought that would be a nice contrast as well. So once I glued it all down um, and dried it with my heat tool, I am going in with some heavy gesso and I'm doing that with a palette knife uh, just to add some more texture to uh, the background but also to blend everything in with each other so it becomes uh, more of one background than all the glued down bits and pieces so I'm uh, mainly um, putting the gesso down at the edges of all the, the glued down bits and pieces. And I'm doing the same with my finger, going around the edges and try to blend it all in with each other so it becomes more of uh, one whole, really. I'm not sure how you say that. And then, once that is dry, I pick out some more ephemera bits and I printed out this photo of cute little me because I also had this piece of cardboard, corrugated cardboard that had a circle shape in it and I thought that could go perfect together. Um, I have some bits of uh, a old books uh, that is actually the spine of old books and I have more pockets and I'm also playing around with the pieces of the tape that were on that letter. And uh, this is an old envelope and I just tear out a piece of it because uh, I didn't 
need the whole envelope there uh, because it would all become very thick and uh, not easy to work on. So I just teared out uh, the, the edge really of that envelope and here I am trying to make a nice composition of all the bits and pieces and where to go with the photo and um, also thinking about the color um, even though I probably will go over with paints and sprays um, but yeah some contrast in in the papers and the ephemera that you you are using is always a good thing I think and also using this doily as a kind of a framing for uh, the photo and I decided that this is the way to go to start with and I'm gluing down uh, the doily mostly for a bit of texture also because it has this nice edge of punched out uh, bits and that will uh, the photo will go on top of that. Now I have printed this photo with an inkjet printer so uh, you need to be very careful with that because the ink uh, can move, uh, can change when you put wet mediums on it. So I'm very careful with adding the photo but it turned out quite okay and I didn't damage it too much and now I am adding the other bits and pieces and finding a nice layout for um, uh, trying to get a nice layout, a nice composition of, of it all. So this bingo sheet I am not using in the end and here I am playing around with the pieces of tape the old tape from the letter and then the golden gel medium comes out because I'm always using that to glue down some heavier materials like this uh, corrugated cardboard I find um, that the perfect glue to use for that kind of stuff and I'm placing it around my photo and then I'm searching for some more to add um, and I had these ephemera bits and pieces from Tim Holtz and I'm looking for some uh, images that could work on my front cover and I was immediately drawn to those big uh, letters, uh, numbers really and uh, I decided to use those. Uh, and I glued them down on top of the front cover just above the photo and then I'm going in with some heavy gesso again and a little sponge to blend in all the edges and all the things that I just put down. So now comes the scary part and that is spraying with the inks and I got a couple of them out. I have uh, the Lindy Stamp Gang, I have some Glimmer Mists and some Distress and Dilution Sprays and then uh, for me this is the scariest thing to do is um, adding those sprays and you see me being very careful um, just one step at a time I'm adding the the colors, the ink, and I'm often using the pipette, the, the, the nozzle thing from the bottle, using a cloth to wipe it off again and uh, carefully, carefully adding color because as I said I just don't want to ruin it but um, well I just want to try and be a more a bit more brave with these kind of things in the future and just go and do it but here I am just using the pipette and water and I have some uh, colors in, in browns and beige and uh, vintage colors that I'm using and also some blues and teal colors 
uh, I believe I had the broken china from this dress and the vintage photo that I used. And uh, trying to uh, create a vintage feel to this cover, but with some color as well. So that is why the teal and the blue tones uh, come in and all the browns and uh, the beige ones need to be there for the vintage feel. So here I am um, adding the vintage photo, I believe, and I'm getting a bit more brave here because uh, I thought at this point, well, that isn't working to be so careful with the color. Nothing happens really. So here I decided to be a bit more brave. And at one point I'm even spraying the sprays onto my cover. Um, because of the photo is sealed. Well, I have this circled shape piece of uh, paper to protect the photo, but the photo is sealed. So if I mess up a bit and spill a bit onto the photo, I can easily wipe it off with a baby wipe. And here you just saw me uh, actually spraying the vintage photo onto the cover. And this is the broken china. Um, at first I'm using the, the, the nozzle and then I think, well, let's just do this. And here I'm spraying and immediately you see this cover come to life, really, uh, because of those colors that I have sprayed. And uh, now it's a bit more contrast. It comes alive, so to speak. And I kind of like that. So now that I have dried everything, I am using a stamp, a script stamp. I'm not sure who it's from, um, to add some bits and pieces of script and text onto the cover. I always find that a nice finishing touch. And I'm using archival ink for that, which is a permanent ink once it's dry. And this is a black one. And here we are a couple of days later and uh, I'm finishing the project, the cover, and I found these letters, these alphabet letters of uh, kind of uh, chipboard, cardboard kind of material. And I gessoed them and uh, then I also had this piece of lace of which I thought could be nice. And I'm adding some uh, Lindy Stamp Gang's spray onto them uh, in a beige kind of color. I believe it's Café Olat to um, get rid of the crispy or white of the of the lace. And for the letters, I go in with a couple of things, and that is some sprays. But this is uh, from Inca Gold. It's a kind of paint. Uh, metallic paint, a creamy kind of paste paint, really. And I'm adding that to those letters, um, adding some mu some uh, f uh, things more to those letters, though, in a later stage, because I want to uh, make them pop out. And this is a lip balm um, to protect, really, those ink sprays and paints that are on those uh, letters uh, because they are water soluble and could react again if I go in there with other wet mediums. So gluing down the piece of lace and I use the golden gel medium for that. Um, and this way I am framing the photo in really and then I'm gluing down the letters as well. At this point, I still wasn't all that happy with the color of these letters. I wanted them to stand out a bit more and I find that they were a bit lost in the background and all that was going on on the front cover. 
So I needed to think about that. And while I was doing that, I thought to go in with a little bit more gesso, the heavy gesso from Finna Bear Art Basics to uh, use a bit on the background and blend it all in and uh, make it more coming together, really. And meanwhile, thinking about those letters and what I could do to make them pop out. Also, I still had the feeling that it wasn't ready yet. So I took out some embellishments that I had. And this is actually an earring that I had in my stash um, that I thought could go very nice on the front cover. It was black and kind of a, a dream catcher um, shape it had. Um, so I, th I decided on using that on the front cover as well. But first I punched out those uh, holes again that uh, were there to, uh, f for the rings. Uh, so I could uh, know where my earring could go. And that is right there. And I glued it down with a golden gel medium. And then um, to make those letters popping out, I decided on using some shadow. This is a Faber-Castell artist pit pen, a black one, I believe. And I go around the uh, edges of the letters to make them pop out more. And again, I'm using the Inca Gold uh, teal um, a paste, really, cream paint paste, uh, to add a bit more to those letters. And um, going around the circle with the Faber-Castell pit pen as well for some shadowing. And uh, the last step is adding a bit more vintage look around the edges of my cover. And at this point, I was kind of happy and ready uh, to put this cover onto my journal. And now the next step is to work in my journal, of course, and you will see me do that in another movie, another video. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you again very soon. Bye-bye.